What's in the box? What is it? Oh my god. What is it? Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone out there is doing well. My name is Mike and this is my buddy. Hey, it's Lewis. What's up? Alright, so today we got a classic for you guys. This is a movie called Seven. It was released in 1995. Um, he, I, I have seen this before, but Lewis has not. So there's no other way it would have been on the channel if not for, for him. So um, this movie has a, I saw it had a 95% from the audience. That's pretty good. 82% from critics, also pretty good. For me, I, I consider this movie a classic. I think a lot of people do. Um, and we actually were just kind of, something came up before this reaction and this movie had come up as part of the topic. I can't remember what we were saying, but, um, oh, we were talking about, we were at dinner and we were eating food and we ate till we were oh, really right. full. And <laughs> it reminded me of this movie and I didn't tell him anything about it, but yeah, so that's how this movie came up. Anyway, uh, we won't dig in too much into this. I'll just read a part of this. Um, when retiring police detective William Somerset tackles a final case with the aid of a newly transferred David Mills, they discover a number of elaborate and grisly murders. All right. So that's all you're going to get before we go into this. So, okay. I'm ready? ready? Here we go. He's young. I mean, sort of. He still looks old, but... Very meticulous man. Maybe he's got OCD. Neighbors heard them screaming at each other like for two hours. It was nothing new. Then they heard the gun go off. Both barrels. Crime of passion. Yeah, look at all the passion on that wall. Yeah, well, this is a done deal. All of the people. Kid, see it? What? The kid. You know, we are all going to be real glad when we get rid of you, Somerset. It's always these questions with you. Who gives a f He's dead. His wife killed him. Anything else it has nothing to do with us. He looks young too. Yeah. Detective Somerset. I'm Detective Mills. Look, uh, Mills. I thought we might find a bar someplace. You know. Well, I'd like to get to the precinct. It's all the same. You know, not much time for this transition thing. I meant to ask you something. Why here? I guess the same reasons as you. The same reasons you had before you decided to quit. Yeah. You You just met me. Maybe I'm not understanding the question. You actually fought to get reassigned here. I thought I could do some good. Look. It would be great for me if we didn't start out kicking each other in the ball. <laughs> I want you to look and I want you to listen, okay? I've worked homicide five years. Not here. I understand that. Well, over the next seven days, detective, you'll do me the favor of remembering that. What city are they in? I forgot. Did they say? I think in New York. Oh. Better enough, that'd be kind of nice to sleep to. Oh, that's why he needs it. Imagine, uh, I think that's New York. Was it like that when you were there? No. It just depends on what part of New York. But, like um, right in the city that was probably like that? Probably like, yeah, in the city. I lived in Queens, so. I think this is like Trent Reznor or Nine Inch Nails. Oh yeah, it kind of reminds me. Nine Inch Nails. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow's in this. I forgot oh, to mention Oh, she's in this? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a... It is Nine Inch Nails. You heard that song Closer? Yeah. It's a remix of that. Like, it sounds familiar. <laughs> Tony Stark might get jealous, dude. Mm. You know what I mean? Unless Brad Pitt's a uh, Tony Stark in a different universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a multiverse. That's right. So the ghost gotta go. Huh? Two TVs. Hmm. Oh, gross. This is the part I was thinking about after we ate. <laughs> oh, this was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tied up with barbed wire? Yeah. Guy dead on the ground. Knife in his back. 
I think I know what you were going to say. <laughs> Multiples back there. Could you please be quiet? <laughs> Some of us are trying to work, man. Got a bucket here. What's in it? Oh, he got in his nose. <laughs> That's gross. That's disgusting. Oh, wonderful. Very moody. You think if it's poisonous, Tumberset? Detective Mills, would you go help the officers question the neighbors? What? Send in forensics on your way out. Kind of like I don't want you here. He's dead. Thank you, Doctor. How could he have survived that? He yeah. suffocated in his... Well, no, the thing is he died before that. Like, someone forced him to eat. Yeah, so they tied him up. I guess they just force-fed him until he died. I guess he threw up a few times. That's why they had the bucket. Look, I made a decision. I had to consider the integrity of the scene. I couldn't worry whether you thought you were getting enough time on the play. Hey, man, just don't be jerking me off. That's all I ask. Don't jerk me off. See how big this stomach is? And the strange thing is, he stretches. This man ate till he burst. Not all the way. He was hemorrhaging in turn. There was a hematoma in the rectus and the transverse abdominis muscles. So he did die by eating? Yes and no. Yes and no. What about these bruises up here? Gun pressed against his head? Pressed hard enough, sure. Yeah. Marks from the front side flush with the muzzle. Coroner said this could have gone on for more than 12 hours. It was definitely a point when he passed out. That's when the killer kicked him. And he burst. Ah. You don't risk the time it takes to do this unless the act itself has meaning. Come on. Somebody had a problem with a fat boy and decided to torture him. You know what's weird? The other movie that we were deciding to react to? He's a, a star in that movie too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's weird. His name's Arlie Ermey. He was an actual uh, Marine. This is beginning. We've got one dead guy. Don't even start that big brain of yours cooking on this, all right? I'd like to be reassigned. What? What? This can't be my last duty. Six more days and you're all the way gone. This should not be his first assignment. It's not my first assignment, you dick. It's too soon for him. Hey man, you know, I'm right here. You can say that shit to my face. Captain. It's too soon for you. Give it to me. Say what? Yeah, he doesn't want it. I'm sorry, but we'll see you later. Have a nice time. I'm putting you on something else. It's too green, man. Too new. Yeah. I'm sorry, old buddy, but it looks like you're stuck cleaning up the fat man. He's like convinced it would. This is gonna turn into more. So that was Monday. Now this is Tuesday. Yeah. I said it's gonna be seven days. Oh, oh yeah. Did you see the the headline on that newspaper? No. What did it say? A uh, prominent defense attorney killed. Why don't you guys, uh, go get a coffee, yeah? We have this breaking story for you. With defense attorney Eli Gould was found murdered this morning. District attorney Martin Talbot is taking questions from reporters. They have assured me they have their very best men on this. This will be the very definition of swift justice. You know, he's got pressure <laughs> being the guy on the case. What does that say? Greed. Oh, they got the scales there, too. Pardon me, George. Summerson. Come in. Eli Gould was found murdered this morning. Put the word greed on the floor. Greed? Yeah, in blood. Nelson's is heading up the investigation. Excuse me? Could you not do that, please? Oh, okay. <laughs> you feel that feeling? You're not gonna be a cop anymore. That's the whole idea. The guy's out walking his dog. He's attacked. His attacker stabs him in both eyes. Yeah, I read about it. I don't understand this place any longer. It's the way it's always been. Oh, uh, coroner sent this down for you. Found him in Fat Boy's stomach. Typewriters, man. You ever oh, used cool. a typewriter? Actually, yeah, I do. At, uh, at the bank. They still have them there? Well, they hardly use them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Something they found inside his stomach. What is it though?
wasn't he? This was found on the wall behind the refrigerator. The obesity emergency. Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to light. It's from Milton. Paradise Lost. All right. I'm confused. It means that this is beginning. This was found behind the same refrigerator, written in Greece. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Seven. Hold on. You can expect five more of these. I can't get involved in this. Somerset. He wanted it. <laughs> he wanted it. I'm all over it. It's going to be five more, man. He's a good detective. Somerset? Yeah. Yeah. Why like, yeah. even if I found those shavings came from that spot, I still yeah. wouldn't have been like, I would have just been like, oh, okay, that's weird. I wouldn't yeah, have thought you to. You wouldn't have thought to move the fridge? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you headed? Far away from here. I think he's just hit a point where there's, he's tired of seeing all the crime. Yeah. You know? They still haven't said... Is it, uh... I think this is New York. Does it look like it? A world of knowledge at your fingertips. You play poker all night. Yeah, we got culture coming out our ass. How's this for culture? Why is there so many security guards for a library? Yeah, I don't know. They gotta protect all those books. <laughs> I guess so. Did you read that in high school? Canterbury Tales? No. Remember, we had to read parts of that. What was that book? Oh, Paradise Lost. Guess he's gonna have to find that. I think he's trying to find out if he can figure out how the next people will be killed or something. This was before the internet. Yeah. So they actually had to go to the library. Was it 95? Well, they didn't have, they couldn't search things up on the internet, like this sort of stuff, right? Yeah, that's true. It's still pretty new if it was in existence. No smiling. You really gonna miss us. Why are they calling him Smiley? A nickname, I guess, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't smile, so they, <laughs> <laughs> they call him Smiley. <laughs> Seven Deadly Sins, Seven Days of the Week, Seven, seven Beatings. beatings. <laughs> <laughs> I got a great name for our kids. Seven. Yeah, I guess I could see it. Seven. Seven periods of school, seven beatings a day. <laughs> we both thought about that. <laughs> seven years to life. <laughs> uh, Seinfeld reference. For those of you who know Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. Good work, officer. Oh. It's like those for dummy books. <laughs> Cliff notes. <laughs> Cliff notes. Feels guilty about it. Bills? Are you okay? Something wrong? It's my wife. She'd like to speak to you. This is Detective Summer, sir. Well, in that case, I'd be delighted. Well? Oh, um, I've been invited to a late supper at your apartment. Uh, my, how's that? <laughs> Tonight. Hello. I'm very happy to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. How are the kids? They're good. They're in the room. Come on in. Oh, what a good dog. Three dogs? That's an apartment, too? Yeah. I hope that's not like the second floor. <laughs> I feel bad for the person under um, all those dogs. So how long have you lived here? Too long. Where is here? I know. <laughs> they don't say. <laughs> well, you get numb after a while. Yeah, things in any city. Including this. Subway. It'll it, go it has to be New York. Not... That's what I'm thinking. Fucking piece of. Sorry, easy soothing. Relaxing, vibrating home. <laughs> Dinner's a good idea. Breaks the, uh, the yeah. ice. The trick is to find one item, one detail, and focus on it until it's an exhausted possibility. Think you would like being a detective? 
You know, I thought about it. Be interesting. Just disgusting at times. They make it seem easy because they know what to look for. But even then, I mean, they have to research and read books. and. Well, like if, you know, in today's world, we have the internet, so it's faster. Yeah. But back then, it's they harder. really had to have, like, that detective skill. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, wait. Gould's wife. She was out of town at the time. So if this means she saw something. What if it's a threat? Well, I'll put her in a safe house. She wasn't too happy about it. Mrs. Gould? <laughs> Look and see if there's anything strange. Wait. What? Here. This painting, Something. it's upside down. He is the Riddler. <laughs> Before forensic. Must there be something inside? God damn it! See this? This is us. Yeah. Just wait a minute. Now somebody said to climb on the furniture. You're kidding me. Call the print lab. Tell you guys, just by looking at the swell pattern, and not the victim's fingerprints. Mm, I don't know, man. Mm. I say he's whacked enough. Like another, another per victim, I bet. Like the fingerprints of another victim. And they have to oh. figure out who it is or something. Oh wow! I've seen this baby take as long as three days to make a match. So maybe you guys want to cross your fingers somewhere else. <laughs> I'm sure that something like that today takes like an hour. It's been a long time since I've seen this, so there's some a lot of things I forgot, too. Even the most promising clues usually only lead to others. So many corpses roll away unrevenged. Don't try to tell me you didn't get that brush tonight. Still got five victims, though. And seven deadly sins. Yep. Thursday. Thursday. Wake up, Glimmer Twins. You've got a winner. This guy goes by the name of Victor. His real name is Theodore Allen. His prints were found at the scene by homicide. He's got a long history of serious mental illness. His parents gave him a very strict Southern Baptist upbringing. But somewhere along the line, they fell short. Now, Victor dabbled in drugs, armed robbery, and assault. But his lawyer saw to it that that didn't last long. His lawyer, by the way, has recently ceased hey, to be Gould. That actor uh, is from Scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not buying all this story. Doesn't seem like our guy, does it? The guy who played the coroner, uh, he was in The Wire. T oh, you haven't seen The Wire yet? No. This is New York. Yeah, I was see, I was about to ask you. Does it's always, it still it's look always like raining it? here? This could be in like Seattle or Seattle. something. Seattle. That's what or I was thinking. Portland or something. Everything in this movie looks super dreary and gloomy. All the buildings are like all torn up. Yeah. Everything just looks like crap. Second. I knew it. <coughs> oh, f me. Dex! You wanna come take a look at this? Dex! Is his hand chopped up? Yeah. Jesus. Victor? What the hell? What's going on here, California? Sarge? Get your people out of here. Go! No one touches anything! Some kind of friggin' wax sculpture or something. Ago. 
This must be the first one. Look, it's dated exactly one year ago today. He's had him there for a year. Holy sh! You got what you deserved. Oh, oh, oh snap! <laughs> He's alive. You're alive. You're alive. Oh, Come down. Emergency on that ambulance. So I'm kind of an idiot. What a sloth. What is sloth? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's one of the seven deadly sins. Excuse me. Hey, what are you doing? Close crime scene. Get the f*** out of here. Hey, me. I got a right to... I got your picture, man. Oh, yeah? I got your picture. Oh, yeah? Detective Mills. M-I-L-L-S. F*** off. I'm surprised you can spell. F*** you. <laughs> oh, shit. Surprised you can spell. <laughs> they pissed me off. Okay. By the way, just the off-topic thing, the body that we just saw with all the sores and stuff. Um, I know that's uh, an extreme case of... You ever heard of eczema? Mm -hmm. That's what that is, because I knew a guy in the military uh, when I was a sergeant and we were deployed. We had a guy in our unit who didn't take baths. I don't know why. He just he didn't like taking baths. And he had really bad eczema that kind of resembled that guy. It just starts from just being gross and, you know, yeah, disgusting. It's impressive to see a man feeding off his emotions. The year of immobility seems about right, judging by the deterioration of the muscles in the spine. Our tests show a whole smorgasbord of drugs in his system and an antibiotic, which must have been administered to keep the bed sores from infecting. How has he tried to speak or, or communicate in any way? Even if his brain were not mush, which it is, he chewed off his own tongue long ago. The guy was kept there for a year. How did he survive for a year? So, whoever was keeping him there was feeding him a little bit. Was feeding him probably just like minimum. Yeah, minimum amount. Just to survive. Almost like a prison or concentration camp or something. Yeah. Hello, William. It's Tracy. Tracy. Is everything all right? Um, I need someone to talk to. Do you think you could meet me somewhere, maybe tomorrow morning? I don't understand. I don't understand. I feel stupid calling, but, uh... You're the only person that I know here. There's no one else. If you can, just, uh, give me a call, okay? Just lonely. She doesn't know anyone there. They just moved there. Mm-hmm. He's probably gonna tell him something like about David. Maybe. I think I just I wanted to talk to someone who's lived here for a long time. I mean, upstate, you know, it's a completely different environment. New York, upstate. No, I don't know any other state where they refer to upstate yeah. except for New York. It has to be. They're doing a good job in not showing. Not really saying what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what's really bothering you, Tracy? David and I are gonna have a baby. Oh, I forgot. I had a relationship once. We got pregnant. I remember thinking, how can I bring a child into a world like this? How can a person grow up with all this around them? I told her I didn't want to have it. And over the next few weeks, I wore her down. I want to have children. I can tell you now that I'm positive that I made the right decision. But there's not a day that passes that I don't wish that I had made a different choice. If you don't keep the baby, I mean, if that's your decision, don't ever tell him that you were pregnant. But if you choose to have this baby, you spoil that kid every chance you get. That's about all the advice I can give you, Tracy. But so his advice is don't tell him if you don't plan to keep it. But if you do plan to keep it, uh, yeah, I think I got that. There's four more. Four more. And somehow, each one leads to clues to the next one. Nobody ever complained about him. He's the best tenant I've ever had. Yeah, our landlord's dream. Paralyzed tenant with no tongue. Who pays the <laughs> rent on time. Well, yeah, he paid his rent, too? How? I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? Wait until the lunatic does it again. It's dismissive to call him a lunatic. Don't make that mistake. Yeah, come on, he's insane. We walked into that apartment exactly one year after he tied Victor to the bed. One year to the day. He wanted us to. Don't know that for sure. Oh, yes, we do. It's a note he left. 
his first words to us. Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to life. Imagine the will it takes to keep a man bound for a full year, to sever his hand and use it to plant fingerprints. Oh, that's why his hand was missing. Yeah. He's a nutbag. Just because of the f he's got a library card doesn't make him Yoda. It's kind of like um, age and experience versus youth and impatience. Yeah. Like he's like, don't dismiss him. And he's just like, yeah, he's crazy. No, he's nuts. Right? You know? <laughs> he wants to go out there and try to catch him while. Yeah, while he wants to think he about the next move. Think more about it. Right? Yeah. How much money you got? I got like 50, 50 bucks. I pulled a field trip. Come on. Canterbury Tales. Anything relating to the seven dead descents. Ask yourself. Hey, wait, wait. What would he study to do the things he's done? What are his interests now? Dr. Ripper, for instance. Library. Only for you do I do this, so it's big risks. Yeah. You saw that? Hmm. It said New York Pizza. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there we go. We did our own little detective there, work. There's right the there. confirmation. Well, that was money well spent. Yeah. God, I miss, I miss New York Pizza. You still get some here. It's not the same. Yeah, uh, brothers. The closest. That's the closest? Yeah. Papa John's does New York pizza now. I've tried it, no. Have you tried it? Yeah, I've tried it. Not even close? Guy in the pizza parlor is a friend from the Bureau. For years, the FBI has been up into the library system keeping records. Mm-hmm. Assessing fines. Monitoring reading habits. Certain books are flagged. Books on, say, nuclear weapons and, well, Mein Kampf. Anyone who checks out a flag book has his library records fed into the FBI's computers from then on. Wait, wait, wait. How is this legal? It's like the Patriot Act. These yeah. don't apply. Although, this was before the Patriot Act. Yeah. That didn't happen until September. Yeah. yeah. The FBI's computers will tell us. Very low key. The Marquis de Chardet. <laughs> the Marquis de Sade. Whatever. The writings of St. Thomas Aquas something. St. Thomas Aquinas. There it is. He wrote about the seven deadly sins. Is that it? Yeah. Let's try it. Jonathan Dell. Whatever. We're sure about that name, are we? Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Are you by any chance a serial killer? You do the talker. Mills. He shot him. Did he shoot him? He shot at him, yeah. Come here! Oh! Oh, I thought it hit him. Guess they found him. He was quick. Oh. Big boy! Get you off guard. <laughs> he was running away kind of weird. What? You see the way he was running away after he shot? <laughs> Wait, who, Brad Pitt? Or... No, the guy who shot oh. at him. He was like running funny. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> um, who is this guy? <laughs> I don't know. He landed on those garbage bags. Yeah. Lose it? I think so. Oh, there go some people. Underneath the truck. Maybe. Oh, oh. oh man. It's not, it doesn't rain this much in New York. <laughs> That's what you're... I, I always you're gonna... noticed that <laughs> it's always raining, it just... I thought you were gonna comment on what we just saw, but... <laughs> well, yeah, that too. Why don't they... Why did he not kill him? Yeah. Are you sure it doesn't rain this much? Maybe it did in 1995. <laughs> Wait! 
talking about? Shot at us. Can't go in. No, if we can't. We, we need a warrant. Cause. We got probable cause. Come on. Think about it. We got Think. probable cause. How do we get here? How do you, what do you hit him in the head with? He had a crowbar or something. Jeez. No reason to be here. Listen to me. Listen to me. If we leave a hole like this, we won't be able to prosecute. The f***ing guy will walk. Now, is that what you want? We no. need a reason no. to knock on this door. Think about it. <laughs> I could tell he was gonna do that. <laughs> He's just gonna kick the door. No point in arguing anymore. Stupid follower. <laughs> Ancient experience versus youth and impatience. How much money we got left? So yeah, like I noticed this guy going out a lot when the murders was happening. Right, right. So I called oh, a detective because this guy was looking creepy and. <laughs> mm, I see what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I do what you said. Here you go. You get oh, something to eat, oh, alright? Oh. You eat. Jeez. Oh, oh shit. that's the head. Yeah. This is a pretty big apartment. It is. It's like a townhome or something. Somerset! Somerset! Yeah. We had it. The top in front of the stairs. Oh. We had him and we let him go. Never uh, I'm surprised you yeah. could spell. Damn. You sure this is yeah. him? Yeah, good, good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Probably not gonna believe it. We haven't found a fingerprint yet. You're right. I don't believe you. Keep looking. On the subway today, a man came up to me to start a conversation. I tried to be pleasant and accommodating, but my head began to hurt from his banality. I almost didn't notice it had happened, but I suddenly threw up all over him. He was not pleased, and I couldn't stop laughing. Sick. Well, I appreciate that, John. I tell you. No, no, you listen, all right? I'll be readjusting my schedule in light of today's little setback. I just had to call and express my admiration. He's murders of his sermons to us. Look, we know him, we know him, we know him. Who's the blonde? Yeah, he came and collected it last night. Last night? Yeah. What's the job you did for him? I've got a picture of it here. Yeah, I've got a sweet piece, actually. I think I undercharged him, actually. They found the blind. The picture! What did he make? I don't know. But notice, it's Saturday and it's raining again. Maybe it's just been so long since you've been to New York, you kind of forgot how much it rains. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you already saw the New York pizza thing. I know. It's just whoever who's who directed this movie? David Fincher. Is he from New York? No, but he he maybe he thought that New York it rains all the time. No, but most of his stuff is pretty dark. Maybe that's just his own twist on it. Must. The other one? Look, I get this thing off of me. Yeah, David Fincher is the same dude who did like Fight Club, uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Social Network, Zodiac. So a lot of those movies are kind of, except for Curious Case of Benjamin Button, but most of those are like Fight Club was a really dark movie that yeah. everything looked like this too. It didn't rain that much in that movie though. He, he had a gun. He made me do it. He, he, he put that thing on me. 
Dan, 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 he made me wear it. Then he, 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 he told me to f her. And I did. I, I f her. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, he had a gun in my mouth. Yeah. It's like hard to think about. Yeah. You want to be a champion. Well, let me tell you, people don't want a champion. They want to eat cheeseburgers, play the lotto, and watch television. Hey, how did you get like this? It wasn't one thing, I can tell you that. I just don't think I can continue to live in a place that embraces and nurtures apathy as if it was a virtue. I sympathize completely. Apathy is a solution. You say that the problem with people is that they don't care. So I don't care about people. It makes no sense. You know why? I don't think you're quitting because you believe these things you say. I think you want to believe them because you're quitting. You want me to agree with you and you want me to say, yeah, 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 you're right. It's all up. It's a mess. We should all go live in a log cabin. I don't agree with you. I do not. I can't. That kind of makes me think, like, <clears throat> I don't know if it's the same for you, but some of the best, like, most deep conversations I've had yeah. have been at a bar, or in, in a bar. Not maybe at the bar, but somewhere in the bar. Alcohol involved? Not necessarily, but I don't know. I just feel like uh, Crazy Frogs, for instance, we had some pretty deep conversations there I guess yeah I guess the alcohol too helps yeah it kind of opens you up a little bit opens you up yeah so the point of that conversation was there's still you shouldn't be like that you should keep hoping thinking the best of people it's like Somerset is more of a he's kind of giving up hope and that's he feels like retiring is the best option for him right now yeah because he's tired of living in the city where there's always these people um, don't people, care, then I don't he care. He wants to get away from everything, mm -hmm. basically. Why the other one's just coming in. Mm -hmm. He still so has he, that. He still has that. The youth uh, and the hope. Exactly. Yeah. Comes with age, I think. I love you, honey. I know. Feel bad for his neighbors. <laughs> I used to have a dart. One of those darts in my room. Did you? Yeah, when I was younger. You any good? Yeah. No. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Did they fast forward to Sunday? Did we miss a day? I've gone. No, they were on Saturday night. Oh. What do you got? Uh, sleeping pills. Glued to one hand. Telephone glued to the other. You see what he did? Sliced her up. And he bandaged her. Call for help and you'll live. But you'll be disfigured. Or you can put yourself out of your own misery. Cut off her nose. Just bite her face. And he did it very recently. She chose death over being disfigured. I've decided to stay on till this is done. Hey, the sun's out. Huh? The sun is out. And you don't have to do me any favors. Thank you, but I'm I requesting get it. that you keep me on as your partner for a few more days. You'll be doing me a favor. Your wife called before. Get yourself an answer machine. Detective. Tim. After this, I'm Detective. gone. Detective! You're looking for me. Oh. Hey! Look who it is. <laughs> Get away from him! On the floor! I know you. Now! On your stomach, you piece of shit! All the way! All the way! Down! Faster! Faster! Jesus Christ, the f is this? I'd like to speak to my lawyer. He cuts the skin off the tips of his fingers. That's why we couldn't find one single usable print in his apartment. Looks like he's been doing it for quite some time. My client says there are two more bodies. He will take Detectives Mills and Somerset to these bodies, but only Detectives Mills and Somerset, only at 6 o'clock today. Why us? He says he admires you. Part of the game. My client claims that if the detectives do not accept this offer, these two bodies will never be found. We don't make deals here, Mr. Swar. My client also wishes to inform you that if you do not accept, he will plead insanity across the board. Yeah, one of the last few reactions I did was, uh, have you ever seen A Few Good Men? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another law movie, courtroom stuff. Yeah, and that one I was commenting a lot that, like, the injury attorneys that I work with, this is the kind of crap that they 
they pull all the time and they know it, you know? Yeah. They know that their client wasn't really injured in an accident, but because of the law, they can get away with, get away with it. If he were to claim insanity, this conversation is admissible. The fact that he's blackmailing us with his plea. And my client would like to remind you two more are dead. The press would have a field day if they were to find out the police didn't seem too concerned about finding them. Hey man, if I was to accidentally shave off a nipple, would it be covered by workman's comp? <laughs> Kind of nice that they're like friendly with each other now. Yeah. I keep coming home late. My wife's gonna think something's up. You know. Yeah. What? Have you ever seen Kevin Spacey play a crazy dude like this? I feel like I have. Really? It's a shame because I just watched a movie of he was in uh, a few days ago called Mar Margin Call. Have you seen that one? It's on no. Netflix. Mm -hmm. You mean it's a shame about what happened to him? What he yeah, did? Yeah, because he, he's such a good actor and then like threw it all away. Yeah. Actually, it's disappointing. Yeah. He didn't really throw it away. He's just been a dirtbag this whole time. And we yeah. Didn't, and we just didn't know. Yeah. So during this movie, he was... Yeah. Wanting people to listen, you can't just tap them on the shoulder anymore. You have to hit them with a sledgehammer. What makes you so special that people should listen? I'm not special. This is no Riley. Two months from now, no one's gonna care. No one's gonna give a shit. No one's gonna remember. You can't see the whole complete act yet. But when this is done, when it's finished, people will barely be able to comprehend, but they won't be able to deny. I mean, as far as master plans go, John. I can't wait for you to see. I really can't. It's really going to be something. Well, you know what? I'm going to be standing right next to you. When this big thing happens, you be sure and let me know. You won't miss a thing. Does it look like it could be New York still? No. <laughs> What's so exciting? It's not too far now. When a person is insane, as you clearly are, do you know that you're insane? Do you just stop and go, wow, it is amazing how crazy I really am? But him saying that is kind of like, uh, he can actually plead insanity then, because it's like he's acknowledging that he's insane. And they have it being recorded. Yeah, yeah it's kind of, like that's a mess up. Yeah. It's not something I would expect you to accept. I did not choose, I was chosen. If you were chosen, that is, by a higher power, your hand was forced. It seems strange to me that you would get such enjoyment out of it. You enjoyed torturing those people. I doubt I enjoyed it any more than Detective Mills would enjoy time alone with me in a room without windows. How happy would it make you to hurt me with impunity? It hurts my feelings. It's in those eyes of yours, though. Nothing wrong with a man taking pleasure in his work. I won't deny my own personal desire to turn each sin against the sinner. Wait a minute, I thought... All you did was kill innocent people. Innocent? Is that supposed to be funny? An obese man, disgusting man who could barely stand up. And after him, I picked the lawyer, and you both must have secretly been thanking me for that one. This is a man who dedicated his life to making money by lying with every breath that he could muster. A yourself. woman so ugly on the inside that she couldn't bear to go on living if she couldn't be beautiful on the outside. And let's not forget the disease-spreading whore. Only in a world this sh could you even try to say these were innocent people and keep a straight face? But that's the point. We see a deadly sin on every street corner, in every home, and we tolerate it. We tolerate it because it's common. It's... It's true. I like what he, he's thinking. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking that. It's, uh, they don't care, so I don't care. Yeah. That yep. mentality. Trivial. We tolerate it morning, noon, and night. Well, not anymore. I'm setting the example. And what I've done is going to be puzzled over and studied and followed forever. Yeah. Illusions of grandeur. You should be thanking me. Why is that, John? Because you're going to be remembered after this. Realize, detective, the only reason that I'm here right now is that I wanted to be. No. No, we would have got you eventually. What was the indisputable evidence you were going to use on me right before I walked up to you and put my hands in the air? John calm down. I seem to remember us knocking on your door. And I seem to remember breaking your face. You're only alive because I didn't kill you. 
Okay, sit back. I spared you. Sit back. Remember that, detective, every time you look in the mirror for the rest of what life sit I've back. allowed you to have. Sit back, you freak! Shut your mouth! You're no messiah. You're a, you're a movie of the week. You're a t-shirt at best. That's New York. What do you got? Dog? Dead dog? Dead dog. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. What time is it? 7.01. It's close. Let's go take a look. Mills? Down, down, down. I have a feeling, I have a feeling he's gonna get shot or he's gonna die. Who? Somerset or Mills? Somerset. Do not take the crosshairs off the guy in red! Get out of the van! Jesus Christ, man, don't shoot me! I'm just delivering a package, man. I got this package for this guy, David. Get it. Slowly. This guy paid me 500 bucks to bring it out here, man. He said he wanted it here at exactly 7 o'clock. Call the bomb squad! I need a bomb squad! We got a box! Go. Off you go. Go! What's <laughs> in the box? I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna open bomb. it. No! When I said I admired you, he's gonna I open it. what I said. Why would he do that? He mulled it over before he started. You've made quite a life for yourself, detective. You should be very proud. Shut the f up, you piece of <coughs> what is it? What is it? Oh my god. What is it? Better not be his wife. California, stay away from here. Stay away from here now. Don't, don't, don't come in here. John Doe has the upper hand. Mills! Here he comes. What? I wish I could have lived like you did. Shut up. I'm trying to tell you how much I admire you, your pretty wife. Man. What? what? Tracy. Oh, shit. What'd you say? It's disturbing how easily a member of the press can purchase information from the men in your precinct. Jeez. Dude. <laughs> I visited your home this morning. Oh my god. After you'd left, I tried to play husband. Blow it away! It didn't work out. So, I took a souvenir. Her pretty head. Dude. Dude, he's gonna shoot him. Give me your gun. What's going on over there? Put the gun I down. saw you with the box! What was in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Seems that envy is my sin. Oh, what's in the box? The what's gun. in the box? Give me the gun. He just told you. You lied! Shut up! That's what he wants. He, wa oh. he wants you to shoot him. That's not true. That's not true. Become vengeance, Tim. Ah, oh, she's all right. You tell me. Become wrath. No! Just throw it all away, you know. No! She begged for her life, Detective. Shut up! She begged for her life. Shut up. Somebody knock his ass out. The life of the baby inside of her. Shut up! Yes, just knock him out. Like, he can't. He, he, he just shut up. He didn't know. He didn't know about the baby. No. Yeah. Oh, he didn't know. Give me the gun, baby. If you kill him, he will win. Oh, God! Oh! Dude. David. No. He's gonna kill himself. Why do you think he used all his bullets? You're the police. <laughs> somebody call somebody? <laughs> You're the police. <laughs> somebody call us. Oh. 
He did what he wanted him to do. He won. Mm-hmm. He even told him that. He's gonna, if you kill him, he'll win. We'll take care of him. Whatever he needs. Where are you gonna be? Around. I'll be around. Ernest Hemingway once wrote, <sighs> The world is a fine place and worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. Catch that at the end. He got his hope back despite all the bad stuff. Oh, yeah. The world's a fine place and it's worth fighting for. What do you think, man? I uh, didn't see that ending coming. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't. I'm glad you didn't catch but it until like almost. I'm not gonna lie, I think I might have seen the ending of this movie at one point. You did? Because it, it, it looked familiar. Oh, maybe With you saw that, like that a whole, clip of it or maybe something? Maybe at one point, because I know this movie's old, but I think I might have seen just the, the ending. Yeah, because that's yeah. a pretty popular thing where he's like, what's in the box? He's like, come on, when what's in the that? box? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what do you think of the movie? It was good. Was it? Yeah, it was good. It's sad, but yeah, that guy, um, he was sick. The way he was killing people and then his the whole thing with his fingernail, his fingerprints mm-hmm. and it was sick. I don't, again, I don't know if this is set in New York or if it's just supposed to be a generic city. I feel like that was kind of a big clue having the New York pizza thing. Yeah. But wherever this is and just how bad they portray like the major city, I feel like they're what they're trying to say is he's kind of like a product of all the bad stuff. Who's the product? The uh, John Doe. John Doe? It's it kind of weird because they all three of them Maybe not the new guy, Mills, but both Somerset and Doe seem like they're both products of living like that. One of them was John Doe insane. Yeah. But Somerset, not insane, but has lost his, his hope his hope and will to help people. He's tired of caring about people who don't care. Yeah. And I guess you could say Mills, too. He's another product. His thing is just don't lose hope. Fight for these people. Mm-hmm. But... In the end, he turned that ray of hope into... He destroyed it. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of... Um, what was it? The Dark Knight? The movie? Where they, what they did to Harvey Dent. You remember I, that scene? For some reason, I knew that you, would, you might bring that up. Just Why? because there's so many similarities to, like, Joker and yeah. like the Riddler. The yeah. kind of stuff he does. So, you remember in that movie, Harvey Dent was supposed to be, like, the... the uh, Mm-hmm. The new knife for the, he was the city for Gotham and the stuff. The new ray of hope. The new hope. Mm-hmm. But then at the end, what they try to do is prove how even Harvey Dent can fall into mm-hmm. darkness yeah. when he went when he turned into Two Face and, and all the stuff he did. They that's the whole point of it. They wanted to show that mm-hmm. he. Um, that that's is, basically. I think it's that's almost like it's they bit off this movie a little bit. Yeah, I think they did. <laughs> They uh they must have lost this movie. Yeah, because oh, that movie they cut they outright say it. I think Joker he tells Batman like he was your shining knight. Yeah, I'll look at him. Yeah, exactly. This movie didn't say it. It's it kind of just like did it with actions. Right. You know. Yeah, it's very similar to this. Yeah, yeah I like this movie. The puzzles in this one, like you said earlier, it's you were like, oh, what is he, the Riddler? It's yeah, much, it's very um. He, a lot of the stuff he did was pretty Riddlerish. But yeah, I don't know what city this is set in. I feel bad for whatever city this is supposed to be. I think it was New York. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to check one more time. Well, the question was, what city does Seven take place in? Most respondents answered New York City, with the remainder being divided between northeastern cities, including Boston and Philadelphia. And only a few correctly answering that the location of the film is unspecified. It's unspecified. Yeah. But that last shot kind of made me think of Boston because when I went there for a week, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the inner city looked like what you saw in this movie. But when you go out to the outskirts, it's like all these cornfields and plant fields and yeah. stuff. Kind I of, say, that doesn't look like New York. Yeah. Even upstate doesn't look like that. Not that many farms and no. stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it has been a, a long... I have seen this, but it's been a very long time for me. There's a lot of things I didn't remember in this, too. One thing I didn't even know, like he pointed out <laughs> in the first... Like couple minutes was that oh it's Monday I didn't I completely didn't even know that it was seven days of the week there so that was kind of cool that they did that 
And I also forgot when they went to his apartment that he, I thought he planned it, but he legitimately didn't expect them to be there. So that, I thought, you know, that was a surprise to me. Um, but what rating would you give this? Out of 10? Mm-hmm. It's right like a 9. It's really good. I think I'd probably give it a 9 as well. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty close to what everyone else gave it. What was it, 95%? 95. Yeah, 95. But, uh... The acting was good. I think uh, Brad Pitt did a good job in this movie. Um... Of course, Morgan Freeman, too. Mm -hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow as well, even though she only had yeah. a few parts. Mm -hmm. The emotion looked real, at least when yeah. she was talking to Somerset about having, you know, being pregnant. Um, yeah. And yeah, you know, everything in this was just so dark. Like, everything was gloomy. And they even kind of, I feel like it was kind of a commentary on how gloomy it was in the beginning. You remember when they first walked into the first crime scene and yeah. the guy... Flip the switch, and he's like, oh, set in the mood, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, that was yeah. kind of like, yeah, you are. This that was is in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. First scene, they're setting the mood for the movie. Um, but, yeah, that it's clearly uh, a, a choice, a conscious decision to make everything in this movie look as dilapidated and gloomy as possible. Because mm -hmm. I don't think even inner cities, you know, that I've seen have ever been that gloomy. And that's what I was noticing throughout the movie. It kept raining. Yeah. Like, why is it raining all the time here? That's got to be a conscious choice, too. Like, yeah. every day we're going to have every it rain. Every day it was raining. So it doesn't rain that much in New York, huh? No. I mean, <laughs> not that, like seven, it was like seven days a no, whole week of just raining. Not the last day. Except for the last day, yeah. Yeah, that's like when the sun came out. And even earlier in the day it rained, though. Because, like, when it was right before John Doe was getting out of the car. Yeah. He, like, uh, <clears throat> you could see it just rained. I wonder if that has any significance, guys. Let us know if... There's any significant significance to the sun coming up on the seventh day? Because that's a conscious decision too to do that. Yeah. You know, he said no. I'm gonna have it rain every day. But in the and last, in the last day, I'm not gonna have it rain. Right. So there's got to be a reason for it. The rain rested on the seventh day. I was trying. To, I was. I was thinking like the <laughs> God rested. I don't know. <laughs> but well, yeah, um, it was. I don't know. I might have to watch this movie again. It was good. Yeah. I feel like just to pick up on all the little intricacies, mm -hmm. even though I've seen this a few times, I don't remember much except for just now watching it, but I think it definitely deserves another watch just if you want to catch all the, you know, the hidden meanings and, you know, metaphors that uh, Fincher might have put in here wanting people to pick up. And I know uh, he or I didn't catch all of that. So if any of you guys did, put it in the comments and let us know what we missed. Yeah, any other thoughts before we wrap this one up? Uh, no. All right. Well, um, hey guys, if you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to spend time with us and enjoy this movie with us. Uh, if you have any other movies you'd like us to check out or shows or anything, please put them in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, see you later.